All right, let's talk about the Zymox pad. I have seen a lot of reviews on YouTube praising this thing and ignoring some of its very obvious and glaring issues. Um, so this is going to be an honest review, not somebody who just got this thing in the mail and, oh my God, I'm so happy because I have a green rim on my pad. This thing is amazing. You no, know, I've used this thing for maybe close to a year and I have some genuine honest feedback both for Zymox and for anyone who wants to know more about this pad and whether they should buy it. If you want to summarize my review, don't pay full price for this. If it comes out on sale, if you can get it for 50% off or if you can get a buy one get one free and you and your buddy want to split the cost 50-50 so you're basically getting the pad for half off, sure, buy one. Why not? But do not, I repeat, do not buy this thing at full price. It is not worth its price, okay? So I have the 14 inch reserve snare, so it has the snares in it, it's 14 inches, okay? Fully customizable with the rim color and the blah, 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 and the base and the tension rods and all that stuff, whatever. It's about $99 or $100, let's just round up, um, for the 14 inch reserve snare uh, plus tax and shipping adds about another $20 so I played approximately 120 for this so once again we need to look at it from that perspective is this pad worth $120 it, absolutely not no it is not worth it and before all the fanboys of this pad jump on my ass the important thing to know about this is it's not whether the pad is good or bad. It's about whether it's worth what they're asking you to pay for it. And the answer is no, it isn't. Okay, so let's get that out of the way first. Now let me go into why I don't think it's worth the price tag. First and foremost, the shipping time is notoriously awful. Uh, most people report waiting three, four months, six months, nine months in some cases. I've seen some horror stories where people are waiting nine, 10, 11 months for their pads. It's, it's such a long wait. And for those of you who are willing to wait that long, you know, great. Like I said, if you're willing to wait for it to ship nine months later, four months later, however long, if you're willing to wait for, for that long for it to ship, then wait that long before you order one. Don't do what I did and order the pad at full price and then sit around twiddling your thumbs waiting for the pad to come in five months later. If you're willing to wait for this thing to ship to you, you should also be willing to wait to get it on sale. Either the half off sale or the buy one get one free, you and your buddy pay half, split, split the cost 50-50, okay? That's how you're gonna get value out of this thing. Because with the amount of time it takes to ship, and the amount of time it takes to order, it's just not worth the full price, okay? So wait, that's the key with this pad is to wait. Because you're gonna have to wait one way or another. Whether you order it when it's not on sale and you wait six months for it to show up at your house or you wait for it to go on sale and then you order it and wait six months for it to show up at your house. One way or another, you're gonna be waiting a long freaking time for this thing. So do not make an impulse buy. Do not run out and buy it right here, right now, expecting it to show up at your doorstep two days later like you bought it on Amazon Prime. Don't do that. So. The other thing that's bad about this pad is the customer service is terrible. Um, a lot of people, I've, I've read a lot of uh, posts about this and watched videos where people will say that, you know, for all the customizing that you get to do, half the time your order doesn't even send to you. They don't even send you the right thing. And I can attest to that. That's what happened with my pad. I ordered a sparkle black finish and they gave me a flat black. Okay. So they got my pad wrong. I sent them... And an email, customer service email, they never replied to it. They didn't care because they already had my money and they figured, eh, this chump is not going to know the difference between flat black and sparkle black. We'll just send them the flat black one. Who gives a, who gives a rat's ass? Well, I did because if I'm going to spend $120 on a pad and I, and I customize it and I say, I want the sparkle finish and you send me the flat black, you know, that's okay for a pad that costs $50. It's not okay for a pad that costs more than twice that, okay? So that's another thing. 
even though it's cool that you get to customize it and you get your black tension rods and your lime green rim and your carbon fiber and all that crap that you see on the website and it looks so cool and you see on all their Instagram posts and stuff, just know that there's a fairly good chance that they're not going to get it right. And if they don't get it right and you're like me and you're unlucky enough to get ignored by their customer service team, you're just going to have to live with a pad that wasn't what you ordered. So keep that in mind too. A lot of people say, oh, well, it's a custom product, so you should have to pay more because, well, it's a custom product. You're paying for that that uh, fashion statement that you're going to make. Well, it's only worth paying for it if, if they get it correct. <laughs> and they don't a lot of times. I've, look, I'm not going to say they always screwed up. I'm just saying be prepared. Cross your fingers and hope they get it right because they didn't get it right with me. I've seen a lot of videos where they didn't get it right with other people. Okay. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about the actual pad itself and how it plays, okay? Now, the first thing that people praise this pad for is, oh, it's so articulate. It's so firm. It's like a real snare drum. No other pad on the market feels like an actual snare drum. It's so, it has a tight, articulate sound. I'm a drum set player, please excuse my sloppiness. Okay, they say, oh, it has such a great sound and it, and it has that snare response and, and, and it's so articulate and crisp. Well, let me tell you why it's like that. Let's be completely honest here. It has a laminate on it, okay? It has a plastic laminate that makes it very firm feeling in your hand and it makes it very articulate, okay? You take a pad like this, the Promark's, uh, not Promark, uh, Prologic's pad, it's gummy. It has this gum rubber to it. So it's got a little bit of a squishy feel. It doesn't feel, you know, firm and articulate, especially when you're playing with freaking beefy sticks, like marching sticks. So it, it doesn't quite have that snare feel. So a lot of people, they go from this, they go from playing on this to playing on this, and they're like, oh my God, it's amazing. Well, all it is is a laminate. There's a lot of practice pads with laminates, okay? Like I said, the Prologic series pads, you can buy the core pads with laminates. You can go out and buy the Invader pad, which has a very similar articulate feel, and it's not nearly as much as the, as the Zymox pad is. Now, I personally am not a huge fan of the Invader pad because you have to clean it and it gets kind of sticky and gross after a while. Um, but if you want a pad with a firm response, you can get the Invader pad. I mean, even the Vic Firth like, stock pad comes with a laminate if you want it. Now, it's a crappy laminate, but it's a laminate. So the secret is out, Zymox. All you have to do is put a laminate on your pad and it will get that authentic snare response and authentic snare feel, okay? So, so if you want a practice pad with a laminate, know that there's other options. I'm not saying Zymox's pads are terrible and it's snake oil and, you know, it's not actually that good. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying pretending like this thing is the mother of all pads and, and is godly because it has a laminate, when there's other options that also have laminates, just as a customer, know that there's other options. If you still want to get this, Fine, that's great. I'm not saying it doesn't have a good feel and it doesn't have, you know, an articulate response and sound because it does. all those things but this is not the only pad on the market that has that okay so just know that make an educated purchasing decision if you want to practice pad with a laminate yes this is an option it's a good option but it's not the only option keep that in mind it's very important a lot of people are wondering about the laminate they're saying oh should I get the Kevlar laminate should I get the carbon fiber laminate I have the smooth white on here how is that any different what they don't tell you in the marketing is that all the laminates are exactly the same. 
And I emailed Zymox to ask them about this. And they basically told me that the laminate is the clear plastic that goes over it. The carbon fiber or the Kevlar or anything like that, it's just a design they put underneath it, okay? So the way that the pad is constructed, there's the wooden base, there's a layer of gum rubber that's exactly the same as every other practice pad you've ever used. It's that same type of gum rubber. Then there's a thin layer that has the decal on it that has a little graphic, which is either a customized graphic that you sent in that you're going to pay a crap ton of money for, or it's going to have that carbon fiber look or the Kevlar look or whatever. And then on top of that, there's the clear laminate. Okay. So when people ask, oh, should I get the Kevlar laminate? Should I get the carbon fiber laminate? Which one is most similar to, you know, a Remo Black Max or White Max or this other drum head? I want it to simulate that. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. You know, people are under the impression that there's different laminates and that if you get the Kevlar laminate, it'll feel different to the carbon fiber laminate and it'll feel different than the smooth white laminate, which is what I have. They're all exactly the same, okay, according to Zymox themselves. Now, what are the other features? Well, the other features is it has a rim. A lot of other practice pads don't have rims. I am in favor of having a rim on a practice pad because why wouldn't you want one? Your drum has a rim, so why shouldn't your practice pad have a rim? The whole point of a practice pad is to simulate the actual instrument. So when you go from practicing on a pad to, to playing on a real drum, they should feel very similar. And if all you're used to doing is playing shots, like rim shots, on like a real feel pad that's just flat, or a Vic for stock pad that's flat, yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna accurately represent the instrument. So having a rim, big plus. Big plus for Zymox that it has a rim. However, as I mentioned before, the Prologix pad and many other pads, the Invader pads, they also have a rim. So it's not like Zymox has a monopoly on pads with rims. Okay, so the question becomes, how good is the rim? Because if it's gonna have one, that's a feature, that's great, yay, but it's gotta be good. It, it's gotta be worth $120. Okay, and this rim, not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah, you get to customize the color, and you get to customize the tension rod colors, and it looks all stylish, but as far as how it actually works, eh, it's not that great. And I'll tell you why. It's because it's incredibly firm and tough. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, you don't want it breaking on you, but it chews up your sticks. Th this is a pair of Blue Devil sticks. I've only ever played with these sticks on this pad. These sticks have never touched anything other than this pad, and they've got a lot of dents in them. They're, they're, they're not chewed up and splintering and fraying, but this practice pad does do a little bit of damage to your sticks. Now let's look at another pad that has a rim on it. Again, I'm gonna use my Prologix pad. This one has a rim. I've been playing on this pad for well over a year with Again, the same pair of sticks. These sticks have only ever touched this pad, nothing else. And these sticks, even though I've played on them on, on this pad for well over a year, they don't have any dents in them whatsoever. And the rim itself has very little, if any, damage to it from the sticks. This plastic rim that Prologix has perfectly absorbs the, the, the impact of the stick and doesn't cause damage to either the rim or the stick. Now, if you have a Prologix pad and your experience with the rim is totally different, let's say your rim tore apart or it chewed up your sticks, you know, I can't attest to that. I can only say from my personal experience using this for over a year, this is, a, this is how you do a rim on a practice pad, okay? If I wanted to chew up my sticks on a rim, I'd play on a real snare drum. But I don't want to have to go out and replace my marching sticks constantly because they're getting chewed up by my practice pad. Now... Is it so bad that I'm having to replace my sticks? Eh, no. It's not that bad. But for a practice tool, you know, you kind of expect for your sticks to be okay. And knowing that this Zymox rim will chew up your sticks, it doesn't give me a good feeling. It, it kind of, again, makes me feel like maybe this isn't worth full price. Maybe this isn't worth the 120 I paid for it. Because if it is worth that much, it should have a rim that doesn't cause damage to your sticks and is also firm enough to not break. They need to find a balance there. Prologix did it. Invader 
also has a great rim. It's a nice soft uh, plastic rim that doesn't cause damage to your sticks and doesn't break. If Invader can do it, if ProLogix can do it, there's no reason Zymox can't either. But they don't. Okay. So I actually tried to solve this problem. The, the main problem with the rim, in addition to the material just being too hard, is that it is directly attached to this wooden base. Okay. So I thought, oh, maybe I can cushion the rim somehow. So I put in some strips of foam around the entire base, thinking that that might cushion it a little bit. It didn't really work. Maybe I could do a better job of it, but that's not the point. I shouldn't have to modify the damn thing because it has an obvious design flaw, okay? They need to change up the, the type of plastic they're using on this thing to make it softer and not damage your sticks while still being strong enough to not break on its own, okay? And, and they haven't done that. That's a problem. Okay. Another thing that I've seen on the internet, some people saying, oh, well, the, the Zymox rim, you can tension it. It has tension screws on it, you know? So the Invader pad and the Prologix pad or any other pad that has a rim, it's a stationary rim. So you can't adjust the tension. But look, on the Zymox pad, it has tension screws. I can tighten it and make it feel tighter or looser. That's bull crap. This rim does not at all touch the practice pad surface. This pad is glued to the wooden base and the laminate is placed on top of it. The rim just sits on the outside of it. They don't even touch each other. There's about a millimeter gap around the entire pad. It doesn't touch the rim at all. This rim is not functional. It does not tighten or increase the tension of the, of the pad at all. It's just a fashion statement. It sits there and it looks pretty. And it lets you do rim shots and it lets you do cross sticks, even though they sound like poop. Oh, well, it's a practice pad, what do you expect? And you can do, you know, you can do rim clicks and stuff, but it's not functional in that you can tighten all these tension rods down and increase or decrease the tension of, no, that's bull crap. If anybody says that, they didn't, they didn't take, a minute and undo all these tension screws and take the rim off and notice that, oh wait, the practice pad is glued directly to the wooden base and the rim doesn't even touch the practice pad. Seriously, they don't touch each other. <laughs> so if they don't touch each other at all, how is this rim supposed to have any effect on the actual playing surface of the, of the rubber? It doesn't. <laughs> so don't believe people when they say that you can tension it up just because it has tension rods doesn't do anything, all right? Oh, it's just for fashion. Does it look cool? Yeah, it looks cool. It looks really cool. It's got tension rods, like an actual drum. It's got a rim that you can have multiple colors and you can customize it and have three different rims and you can swap them out and all this cool stuff and it's really neat. That's all great, but it doesn't actually change the fact that the rim is just an accessory. It's a fashion statement. It has a real purpose and a functional purpose, yes, but don't don't give me this bull crap about it being able to change the tension of the of the head. It, it doesn't do that. That's absolute bull crap. It's not to say the rim is bad. I like that it has a rim. It's cool that you can swap out the colors if you want to just by undoing the tension rods and putting a different rim on. That's all great. It's a really nice thick rim too. It's not shallow and thin, so it gives you a really nice, you know, accurate feel you know because when you play rim shot you can't play too high or you won't touch the rim or you can't play too low because you'll hit the rim enough and you won't hit the pad so it's, it's got a really nice height difference between the surface of the pad and the height of the rim so you get really fairly accurate rim shot as far as the feel is concerned it feels like a rim shot should it doesn't necessarily make a rim shot sound because anyone who knows anything about real drums the rim shot sound is created by the shell resonating when you strike the rim. That's why it sounds the way it does, is because when you strike the rim, it transfers that vibration down into the shell, whereas when you play on the head, it transfers the vibration to the head, not the shell. And then the, the head sends that vibration to the shell, whereas a rim shot, since you play the, the head directly, or the rim directly, it sends the vibration directly into the, into the shell. So if you don't have a shell on your drum or your pad, it's not gonna make a rim shot sound, okay? So there's not really a big difference between, you know, a rim shot and a rim click. I 
not really a big difference. They pretty much all sound the same. Um, but again, as far as the feel is concerned, it's considering this is a practice tool, and it should, and the feel is probably the most important thing. Yeah, it feels good. Okay, so the rim is fine for for feel, and and it's a good function to have. I'd rather have a rim than not have a rim. But again, is it a hundred and twenty dollar quality rim? Pfft, no, it shoes it for sticks. It's really it's it's too firm. Let's talk about the next thing. The snare sound. Everyone talks about, oh, it's so cool because it sounds like a real snare drum. The Invader doesn't do that. All these other pads don't do that. Zamox is the only company who has this really cool snare thing. Well, first of all, that's not true. Yamaha had a pad that they sold that also had metal BBs in it that made a snare sound. I had that pad when I was in eighth grade. I don't really know if they make it anymore or if it's easy to find, but they had it. So it's not like Zymox is the first person to ever come up with this idea. With that said, does it work? Yeah, it works. It actually sounds more or less like a snare drum. The problem I have with this is this square is tiny. This is a 14 inch diameter pad and they put a tiny little square in it. So unless you're playing dead in the center, anywhere else you play, Anywhere else you play, you don't even get the snare response. Now, if, as far as I know, the size of this square is the same on the 14 inch pad as it is on the 12 inch pad. So on the 12 inch pad, it takes up a larger amount of space compared to the size of the pad. But on the 14, there's a lot of playing surface on the 14, specifically near the rim or near the edge, where it's really far away from the center of BBs. On the 12 inch, there's not that big a difference, there's not as much distance between the dead center of the pad and the edge. But on the 14, there's a fair amount of distance there. So you lose this snare response. So again, is it awesome that it has BBs in it? So it makes a real snare sound. Yes, it's super cool. But is it $120 super cool? No. <laughs> How could they have fixed it? They could have made it one big rectangle. Okay. Or rather, let's do it like this. One big rectangle. Okay. Now, how would that be cool? Well, first of all, as you go from center to edge and back to center... As you go from center to edge to center, you wouldn't lose snare response, okay? The other thing that you could do, which is really cool, is you could use it for zone control. So let's say they made it a big rectangle, um, and that means that there are parts of the pad where the edge has the snare sound and parts of the pad where the snare sound doesn't exist. That could be really useful for zone control. Let's say you're playing a traditional marching snare and it has the snares on the side. Okay, usually in concert band, you line them up directly in front of you, um, but on a marching snare, they're gonna be on the side. So you could use that as a really cool practice idea. You could hear the difference in sound between playing at the 12 o'clock position, because in, again, in theory, the BBs would be kind of diagonal like this. You could tell the difference in sound between playing at 12 and playing at like two o'clock or so you'd be able to practice different sounds. So some bands, you know, when they want a piano sound with more snare response, they'll play over here on the side. You can see DCI bands doing that, okay? They'll play over here where there's better snare response at lower dynamic levels. So they'll go, instead of going from uh, center to edge to center like this, they'll actually play in line with the snares. That's a cool option that Zymox could have done, okay? And even if they didn't want to do that, what they could have done for the 14 inch pad is make this bigger, make it take up more space. 
because on the 12 inch pad, you may not be able to notice as much of a difference when you're going from center to edge to center. But on the 14, it's definitely noticeable, okay? And yes, that does mean that you get a cool difference in sound between piano and forte. Okay, so it sort of allows you to do zone control. But, again, I still think it's, it's not quite there. It's a cool idea, it's just not implemented very well. They could have done so much more with it. And again, this comes back to that same idea. Are the snare BBs cool? Yes. Am I glad they're on the pad? Yes. Is it a good feature of the pad? Yes. But they didn't do it well enough to justify the $120 price tag. They just didn't. Okay. The wooden base. One of the few good things about the practice pad. It's incredibly sturdy and it's very heavy. So you can put it not inside of a snare basket. I don't like doing that because then I end up hitting my sticks on the little rubber claws of the basket. I just put it on top and it's so heavy and really well weighted that it doesn't really slide around. So that's awesome. They did a really good job with this base. A lot of people, a lot of companies are afraid to make their practice pad bases really heavy. This one, they don't really care. They make it nice and beefy for you and it feels really solid. It also is very smooth to the touch. I've had other practice pads where they didn't really sand the wood very well, and so it's got a little bit of a rough spot here or there, or the the edges of it are kind of sharp and they're not smooth and rounded over. So Amox did a great job with that. So at the end of the day, let's take an honest look at the Zymox pad, okay? You're not some high school freshman who's 14 years old and you finally got this in the mail and it's lime green and it has carbon fiber and it looks wicked sick, bro. Let's look at it like it's a real product that needs a proper evaluation. The price tag, extremely high, way too high, okay? The shipping, it takes way too long, way, 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 way too long, shipping wise. And all that considering you may not even get the pad that you ordered because they may screw up somewhere along the way which happens with a fair number of orders from what I've seen online and from my own personal experience, that's not acceptable for a product that costs this much. This is the most expensive practice pad on the market. Nothing is as expensive as this. So that's just not excusable. If they're going to be an elite, if they're gonna charge you know, that much money, I expect the highest of high quality. And I'm not getting that from this, okay? The laminated surface, it's great, feels good, is articulate, has a good response but it's not the only practice pad on the market that has a laminated surface. It's not the only practice pad on the market that has a really crisp, articulate response. I mentioned a couple, the, the ProLogix Core Pad, the Invader Pad, I mean, even the Vicfor Stock Pad, for Christ's sakes. Like, there's a lot of options out there. So while this is a good feature, the laminate, don't let it fool you. It's not the only option out there, okay? The rim, am I glad it has a rim? Absolutely. Every practice pad should have a rim. You need to have a rim on your practice pad in order to accurately simulate what the real instrument is going to be. While I like the rim, and it's a great feature, it's not done very well. It's too stiff. Yes, it doesn't break, which is great, but it also chews up your sticks like crazy. So that's not good. I'm not happy with that. The snare babies, as we've already discussed, are a great addition to the pad. They make the pad sound better. Um, they give you a nice articulate snare response, and to a certain extent, you can tighten or loosen this to make the BBs uh, looser or tighter to, to change the sound a little bit. Um, but they could have done a much better job in how they implemented it in order to make it more effective. So when you consider that other companies in the past, again, I'm going to quote Yamaha here, or other companies in the past have done it better, it's hard to look at this and say, great job, Zymox. It's, it's more of a, all right, good first step. Now make it actually good because for $120, this is not good. It's better than nothing, but it's not what it needs to be to justify the $120 price point, okay? So that's my summary of the Zymox pad. Is it a good pad? Yes. 
is it one of the best, if not the best, practice pads out there for people practicing marching snare? Yes. However, it is not in any way, shape, or form worth the $120. Considering that Zymox, on almost a yearly basis, has at least one or two 50% off sales, or buy one, get one free, where you can split the cost with a buddy and pay 50-50, it is not worth paying full price for this, okay? Wait for the sale. Do not buy this at full price. It is not worth the money to buy at full price. And that is considering the fact that there are just other options on the market. If this was the only option on the market or if every other practice pad on the market cost, you know, more than $100, maybe. But there's other options that are significantly less expensive that are just as good, if not better, in, in certain areas. All right, so that's all I have to say about that. As I said at the very beginning of the video, regardless of the overall quality of this pad, it's not worth paying full price for it. If you still want to get one of these, I don't blame you. I like mine. Now that I have it, now that I use it, I like it. When I think back to all the money I spend, I start regretting it. <laughs> so don't do like I did and buy it at full price. But, you know, if you want a Zymox pad and you want it to be a little customized and you want it to be really cool and be different from all your friends and stand out because status matters in the drumline community or whatever, <laughs> get one. They're good pads. I'm not trying to say they're not good. All I'm saying is they're not worth the money you pay for them if you buy them at full price. So make an educated purchasing decision. Know the real value of this pad and then be willing to spend what it's actually worth. And I think that is going to be your best bet.